secret family recipes, hidden park entrances, and scary bathroom facts you might have been better off not knowing about. We are exploring the deep, dark corners and crevices, ooh, that doesn't sound good, of Animal Kingdom's biggest mysteries today on DFE Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. I have been looking forward to recording this one. I've been waiting all day to sit down and read this script for you because it is so much fun and I love talking about this park. Disney's Animal Kingdom is the youngest park out of the four main Disney World parks, but that doesn't mean there's a shortage of secrets here. So today we are hitting you with not only some classic fan favorite hidden gems, but even more new Animal Kingdom secrets and unearthed history you've never heard about until now. I know a lot of y'all think the Animal Kingdom is the last park you'd want to go to, but this is the park I always go to to sort of relax and rejuvenate and just restore, I guess. I love spending a morning here all by myself, just vibing. It's great. Okay, anyway, moving on. Number one in our list of 50 secrets from Animal Kingdom is learn the Tree of Life's origin story. So the main icon, or weenie as well as Walt would call it, of Animal Kingdom isn't just a really big tree. It's a really big tree with a backstory that most people don't even know exists. So our story begins in a barren discovery island with absolutely zero plants or flowers or vines or anything until a teeny weeny ant came through and planted a seed. The ant made a wish on that seed and he wanted the tree to grow, a large tree, large enough to provide him and his animal friends with shelter. Because this is Disney, and Disney's all about the wish granting, the ant's wish came true, and thus the Tree of Life was born, growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it was big enough to shelter all types of animal friends. And guess what makes the story 10 times better? Our ant friend who started it all is actually on the tree. Just enter the Tree of Life garden path, which by the way is a secret in and of itself, and track down the giant tree root. If you follow the bug tracks to one of the root's many teeny tiny holes, they'll direct your attention to the ant carving on the park's icon. How many of you knew that? Raise your hand, let me know in the comments, because I bet a lot of people didn't. Okay. Next secret, this is one of my favorite ones because it's a food one, eat in an Airstream trailer. So there are a lot of details and decorations and doohickeys all around Restaurantosaurus in Dinoland USA, which is one of my favorite restaurants in all of all four parks. But one of the best details has to do with where you can sit. If you head to the back of this quick service restaurant, so basically walk in, turn right, and keep walking till you get to through the gym and to the very back, and you're gonna find a booth tucked away into a little nook, or rather a converted Airstream trailer. You can see the exterior of the trailer outside the restaurant too. And close to the Airstream trailer on the inside, you'll also find a jukebox that plays all real music that fits perfectly with the Dino Land theme. You should definitely take a look at some of the names of the songs in there. You will love it. But that's one of my favorite tables in all of Disney World is that kind of red shiny booth back there in the Airstream trailer. Okay, next on our list, attend a special showing of an underrated show. So we don't often talk about the Feathered Friends in Flight show, but we should. This show features a couple of expert bird trainers who teach visitors all about the birds flying around Animal Kingdom. And of course, you can expect lots of guest appearances from the feathered stars themselves. But what makes this show even cooler is how accessible it is. Special sign language showings of feathered friends in flight happen on Tuesdays and Saturdays. So if you're planning to visit Animal Kingdom and like to attend a show with a sign language interpreter, make sure you swing by this theater at the start of your day to check on the show times. All shows with sign language interpretation will be marked with a symbol to the right of the listed start time. Okay, another Animal Kingdom secret, find out why flamingos and baseball go hand in hand. This is brand new. I never really thought I'd write about flamingos and baseball in the same point or ever, yet here we are. As it turns out, baseball clay, which is specially designed to drain water quickly on the field of Disney's ESPN Wide World of Sports complex, is helping flamingos and Animal Kingdom to build their nests. The baseball clay has been so helpful, in fact, that it's allowed for lesser flamingos in the park to have an unprecedented breeding season with their taller and better nests. And that resulted in the second of the past 20 years, lesser flamingo chick being born in the park. Now, a lesser flamingo is a type of flamingo. It's not that they're like worse or anything. So the Tampa Bay Rays even played a part of their training season at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex this year, meaning that a lesser flamingo technically stood on the same clay as a Major League Baseball pitcher. 
This next secret is brand new to the park and you need to know about it. Her name is Moana of Motunui and you will board her boat, sail across the sea, and restore the heart of Te Fiti. Or at the very least, you can meet her and say hi. Over at Animal Kingdom, the Wayfinder Moana is meeting with guests. At Character Landing, which is near the Isle of Java when you're heading toward Dinoland USA, you can find her typically from 9.30 until 3.00. Cast members will have to cut the line off at 3 p.m. to make sure Moana can get back home to Motunui, okay? But if you're in line before that cutoff, you can still meet her and ask what Pua and Heihei are up to lately. But here's the thing to know. She's extremely popular, as I'm sure you can understand. So if you want to meet her, it's best to go get in line right at park opening. Or at least close to it. Yep, this is one wayfinder you need to rope drop. Okay, so just a heads up, you're going to hear a lot about a guy named Joe Rody today, but that's because he's kind of a big deal in Animal Kingdom. Disney legend Joe Rody is the Imagineer who led the creative team behind Disney's Animal Kingdom, so the hidden secrets you'll find about him all throughout the park are almost as frequent as hidden Mickey sightings. Almost. Now, Joe is not the secret here. One of the very best secrets, though, isn't actually all that secret. In fact, it's something you can order and eat. Our friends over at allears.net raved about the cheeseburger pods from the quick service, the Thule Canteen, back in 2021. And lo and behold, Joe Rody actually replied to them. According to Rody, the cheeseburger pods were inspired by a Rody family home recipe. They were made out of something called hamburger hash, which was basically everything that would go in a cheeseburger, including the bun, chopped up and cooked in a pan. This next one's a fan favorite hidden detail of ours that we love to point out every time we get in line for dinosaur. Yes, we are those people. Before you board one of the time rovers, be sure to look up when you're in the loading dock. You'll notice some yellow, red, and white pipes with chemical formulas written on them. Condiment formulas, to be exact. Back in ye old days, some of you may remember, McDonald's used to sponsor dinosaur, which is why we used to be able to get Mickey D's fries in Dinoland USA. So those pipe formulas you're looking at are actually the formulas for ketchup, mustard, and mayo. So why is Animal Kingdom so hot? Well, a lot of the time people attribute it to having so many plants. And you're gonna see foliage of all kinds lining the paths of this nature-centered park. So where does Disney come up with all of these plants? Well, more than four million trees, plants, shrubs, ground covers, vines, and grasses from every continent on Earth except Antarctica were planted in Animal Kingdom. A lot of this was planted a year in advance while the park was still in its planning stages. And that's because Disney had to make sure the animals that'd be moving into the park would be provided with well-adapted habitats and environments for an easy transition into their new home. Did you know the Animal Kingdom has a secret passageway? It's a secret entrance, actually. Even if you don't dine at the Rainforest Cafe right outside of Animal Kingdom, you may still want to take advantage of it. You can enter the restaurant from outside the park and still get into Animal Kingdom without having to fight those opening crowds. Yep, you still need a proper park admission and park pass to enter, but if you go through the Rainforest Cafe gift shop to the park entrance over there, you'll find fewer crowds and a quiet spot not many guests know about. By the way, that's also on the side of the park where you can very quickly make your way up to Pandora so you can get in line for Flight of Passage right away. Did you know you could drink green beer in Animal Kingdom? And not just on St. Patrick's Day. As Kermit would say, it's not easy being green, but as we would say, it's very easy drinking green. Yes, that was probably lame. Over at Satuli Canteen, or Pongu Pongu in Pandora, you can grab a green beer called the Green Hawks Grog Ale. This is a very light, very crisp, basic beer. But if you don't want to wait until St. Patty's Day to grab yourself a green dyed drink, you can grab it all year long in the world of Avatar. All right, here's the next Joe Rody secret for you. As you exit Flight of Passage on the lowest level corridor, you'll see three handprints and initials on the walls belonging to JC, James Cameron, Avatar's director, JR, Joe Rody, Pandora's lead designer, and JL, John Landau, Avatar's executive producer, aka the ultimate creative trinity. So you wanted Animal Kingdom secrets, be careful what you wish for. Disney's Animal Kingdom is the only park that has doors with locks on them leading to the bathrooms. But have you ever wondered why that is? The answer is pretty surprising. Animal Kingdom's bathrooms have doors with locks on them just in case an animal or animals breaks out of their enclosure and guests need to take shelter. In this situation, you would be able to run to the nearest bathroom to lock and bolt the actual physical door into the bathroom. So essentially it's protection in the case of real life animal stampedes. 
Don't let this freak you out though, the probability of that actually happening is very slim. In fact, you'll see this same sort of outer lock set up at many zoos as well. It's just a general safety feature to protect you when large animals are around. Did you know you can peek into an on-site veterinary clinic in Animal Kingdom? Well, if you take the Wildlife Express train over to Rafiki's Planet Watch, walk to the back of the conservation station and you'll find an actual functional veterinary treatment room. The animal program veterinarians on site have been able to do so many life-saving procedures on animals, like placing an artificial eye in one of the park's fishes and removing a golf ball from the gull of a hungry snake rescued from one of Disney's golf courses. Most of the time, you'll only be able to see where some of these animal procedures take place, but every now and then you might stumble upon a surgery in process. Oh, how about that? Joe Rody's back again. Over at Pongu Pongu in Pandora, aka the place where you're going to pick up that fruity, bobalicious, night blossom frozen drink, you'll notice a bunch of dog tags hanging from up above. Many of these dog tags have pictures of Imagineers printed on them, including, you guessed it, Mr. Joe Rody himself. And another amazing Imagineering detail from Dinoland USA. Really, this place is full of them. I'm so sad they're going to probably take out Dinoland USA and put something completely new in there. That's another story for another day. But when you're in Dinoland, you'll hear a radio anchor commenting in between the songs that play in the land. But where exactly is this so-called radio station that our radio anchor is doing their show from? Well, listen closely because the station anchor does fill you in on this underrated mystery. Apparently, they're coming to you live from the teeny tiny attic of Restaurantosaurus, of course, because it's the best place in all of the park. Now, this makes perfect sense. After all, the backstory of Restaurantosaurus is that it's supposed to be run by the grad students who work at the dining Institute. So it seems that the graduate students have made their own fun by starting up a radio station and playing all of today's hits. Okay, in Animal Kingdom, you can actually touch a Flasca Reclinata. This sounds way more cool than it actually is. When you first enter Pandora from the Discovery Island side, you'll see this bulbous looking plant towering over a section of the walking path, looking all green and pink and otherworldly. Since the Navi have a very strong connection with nature in Avatar, the Imagineers thought it was important for guests to be able to connect to the land. So before you walk past this plant or just take a quick photo, place your hand in the center, AKA that pinkish blobby looking part, and watch as it responds to your touch. How will you know it's working? When the plant starts glowing, making noises, and spraying water. Oh my goodness, we're back at Restaurantosaurus. Of course we are. So at the end of last year, a controversial change took place in this quick service restaurant. Previously, you could choose three sides with a kid's meal here, but now you get the choice of two sides along with a mini National Geographic book. The book is called So Cool Dinos and is a really cute short story crammed with fun facts about dinosaurs. It talks about their diet, their lifestyle, even shows pictures of various dinos. It's a great way to get your kids excited about some of the offerings in Dino Land, even if they're not super thrilled to have to sacrifice that applesauce for it. Now, Animal Kingdom is one of those parks where we are able to mourn over what never actually happened here that maybe should have. The lands in Disney's Animal Kingdom that we know and love today bring us to Africa, Asia, Discovery Island, Dinoland USA, and Pandora. But what if we were transported to a land of dragons and mythical creatures instead? Animal Kingdom originally planned to incorporate real, extinct, and imaginary animals. The imaginary animals were supposed to be represented in a land that never came to be, but was supposed to be called Beastly Kingdom. Beastly Kingdom was gonna be split into three sections, nice, beautiful, and dangerous. Here, guests would encounter creatures from folklore like dragons and unicorns. Due to budget cuts, Dino Land was prioritized over Beastly Kingdom, and the land ultimately never came to fruition. But now, this space is used to hold Pandora, where we can ride on the backs of mythical banshees. Despite Beastly Kingdom never becoming reality, there are still several nods to what could have been all throughout the park. You can find hidden dragon statues and dragons on different signs and benches and light fixtures, especially around the park's entrance. Now it's time to experience a side of Animal Kingdom you've never seen before. The Wild Africa Trek is a three hour tour of the Safi River Valley, an area of Animal Kingdom that's typically unseen by guests. 
This guided tour offers amazing and very close-up views of many of the animals that call Animal Kingdom home, like giraffe and rhinos, hippos and crocodiles. And after your trek concludes, you'll get to enjoy the tastes of Africa in an array of small plates from a picturesque vantage point right on the savanna. The price of this tour typically ranges between $199 and $249, which does not include the cost of park admission, which you'll also need, along with a park pass reservation. You can book this tour through the Disney website or on the My Disney Experience app. When you're riding Expedition Everest, did you know you could see your name on an Everest poster? When you're getting towards the end of the Expedition Everest queue line and you're in the last section of the queue before a cast member asks you how many in your party, make sure you take a look at the fly-ridden posters cycling through. You just might see your name credited on one of them. But why? How does Expedition Everest know you're even in line? Well, it all has to do with your magic band. Magic bands contain an RFID, radio frequency identification, chip which can help trace and sync and transmit all kinds of data throughout the park. That's also how those on-ride photos for certain rides automatically sync to your account without you needing to go up and scan your band at a photo station. I know, it sounds kind of scary, like scary invasive when you first hear about it, but Disney assures you that all they use this data for is to help improve your overall park experience, whatever that means, and hit you up with some Disney magic IRL. Okay, you know I said that was another story when I talked about Dino Land? Okay, so you can be just as confused about Dinoland's future as we are. That's another secret of this park. This short recap of the potential plans for Disney's Animal Kingdom will not do it justice. That being said, I'll try to give you the abbreviated version regardless, and you can learn more about the details from our D23 video when you get the chance. Essentially, during last year's D23 Expo, Josh Demaro, who's eminent ruler or whatever of the Disney Parks Experiences and Products Division at Disney, announced that there could be either an expansion or a complete retheme of Dinoland, with new areas centered around Moana and or Zootopia. While Demaro wanted to make it crystal clear that these concepts had been very seriously discussed with the Imagineering team, Disney also took extra care to soften their language around these major additions, calling them potential expansion opportunities and creative what-if ideas. While the future of these new areas and the fate of Dinoland USA is still up in the air, we'll definitely be on the lookout for any and all updates and let you know immediately when we do hear any word about what's going on with these possible game changers. Maybe Moana being stationed at the entrance of Dinoland is a clue, or the fact that Disney's opening a Zootopia land elsewhere could indicate they've already got some blueprints going as well. We'll see. Did you know you can join the Navi? One of the most unique souvenirs in all of Disney World can be found at the Wind Traders gift shop inside Pandora. The Avatar Maker is a machine that scans your face and creates an Avatar Navi for you based on what you look like. The scan can replicate pretty much all of your facial features, unless you have freckles. Sorry, all you freckled folks out there, apparently the Navi don't have them. However, even though Navi don't have eyebrows, we were told by a cast member that they add eyebrows onto these blue guys just to make sure the figurine looks more like you. And less weird, I guess. Also, not to get all Avatar nerdy on you, but Navi generally only have eight toes and eight fingers. However, the figure you get will have ten digits each. So really, what you're actually making is like a human Navi mix, which is still pretty cool. If you want to make an Avatar figure, you can do so for $79.99. It's a little steep, but it's also a souvenir you're guaranteed not to find anywhere else. Okay, let's go on a mouse hunt. Disney World has hundreds of hidden Mickeys around property and Animal Kingdom is no exception, despite all the hidden Joe Roadies. So let's rapid fire a few of our favorites at you that you can track down during your next visit. When you reach the lab section of Flight of Passage, look for a collection of small, different sized bottles with black caps on a countertop. These bottle caps seem to come together in the middle of the collection and form a classic hidden Mickey. And right outside Zawani Traders in Africa, look down to find a nearby manhole cover. Around this manhole, you'll notice several rocks embedded all around the cover to form a very familiar mouse looking shape. Okay, one more for now. Inside the Island Mercantile Store, keep an eye out for the bees and the honeycombs featured on one of the store's beams. Those yellow spots on the red honeycombs aren't as random as you think. Are you ready to learn Swahili? Okay, maybe you're not going to be fluent in this African language by the end of your park day or anything, but you might just learn a thing or two simply by walking through the Africa section of Animal Kingdom. There are tons of places in Animal Kingdom's Africa where you can pick up some Swahili vocabulary. 
Throughout the Kilimanjaro Safari Queue, you can learn the Swahili words for the different animals you're going to see on the savanna. For instance, we learn that the word for cheetah in Swahili translates to duma, and ostrich is mboni. Along with the Safari Queue, you can also pick up some Swahili words and phrases from this area's detailed signs and posters and wall art, and it's all stunning. You know that all too famous Mickey Mouse painting with the phrase Fitchwa Fellow underneath? This translates to Hidden Fellow to represent how Imagineers love placing hidden Mickeys in hundreds of areas around property. All right, who is ready to do something a little devious? Instead of standing on the bridge that overlooks a portion of Kali River Rapids and waving at the passers-by, be on the lookout for buttons. These buttons will activate the surrounding elephant statues and cause them to spray water from their trunks as each group of guests float by. I know, it's wonderfully diabolical. You should definitely do it. Oh, there you are again, Joe Rody. It's been a while. On the back side of the character dining restaurant Tusker House, you can spot a few masks on the wall fashioned into a lot of cool shapes and colors and designs. But if you look closely, you can spot a small sign underneath them that says Joe Rody, J-O-R-O-D-I, masks and beads. Can you guess who that's referencing? I'll give you a hint. It is not Mickey Mouse. Next on our list of hidden secrets in Animal Kingdom, don't forget to look down. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Some of Disney's best secrets can be found right under your feet, literally. Take Pandora, for instance. If you look down as you enter the queue for Navi River Journey, you're going to find some Navi footprints in the ground. Feel free to step into one and compare your foot size to one of theirs. Oh, and if you're there at night, don't forget to look at all the bioluminescence on the ground. The Asia section of the Animal Kingdom takes you on a visual journey through the area, but once again, you're going to have to look down to get the full picture. Around Asia's pathways, you'll find bike tracks embedded into the concrete where, according to the all-powerful Disney Imagineers, villagers have traveled through to get to the mountains. But the really cool part about this detail is how you can spot the immediate transition from bike tracks to footprints once you get closer to Expedition Everest. This is supposed to represent that the terrain got too difficult to take bikes on, so visitors had to walk on foot to be able to see Expedition Everest in all its glory. Seriously, these Imagineers think of everything. Now, this is one of the best tips. You know how I said I love Animal Kingdom because it's where I kind of go to relax and rejuvenate and vibe. Well, here's what you need to know to do that. For the most part, Disney's Animal Kingdom is pretty easygoing. But on those abnormally busy days, like we tend to come across around spring break and Christmas season, even a chill park like Animal Kingdom can get packed out and overwhelming. If this happens to you, like it happens to me pretty much every day in Disney World, Seek out sanctuary in these locations. First, the trails around the park. Our favorite spot for a bit of alone time is probably the Discovery Island Trails, also known as the Tree of Life Trails. They surround the park's massive tree icon, and usually they're a lot less crowded than other areas of Animal Kingdom because nobody really knows they're there. Next is the amphitheater bleachers. It's not ideal in the summertime when it's scorchingly hot outside, but the Discovery River Amphitheater is another great place to get away. There are plenty of seats so you can avoid other guests if you'd like, and upon the release of this video, there's not a daytime show happening in the theater, RIP Kite Tales, so you'll get some peace and quiet no matter when you swing on by. Now, next is Nomad Lounge, and I'm surprised we've already gotten to number 29 on this list without talking about Nomad Lounge, but we're going to talk about it right now. I can't do an Animal Kingdom video without giving a shout out to this somewhere, and I hope it's someplace else later in the video. If it's not, I'll make something up. Nomad Lounge is the ultimate relaxing dining experience, maybe even in all of Disney World. I don't know, the vibe there is just so chill and so comfy. You can eat inside or outside on the patio. You'll get to sit in comfy chairs and choose from a menu of small plates and fancy drinks. I just love it here. And for the Oasis. Most people just walk straight through the Oasis on their way to Discovery Island. But this is a nice, quiet place that's littered with fun animal exhibits and small nooks where you can enjoy a peaceful moment to yourself. I absolutely love the little bridge here and the little hidden caves. And again, most people just walk right on by. Now, are you ready to get up close and personal with your favorite animals? So that last private tour we talked about earlier was pretty pricey. How about we look into a couple more tours with some lower price tags this time around? Up Close with Rhinos and Caring for Giants are two different 60-minute tours that'll teach you about two popular animals roaming around the Animal Kingdom grounds. Caring for Giants lets you meet the elephants, while Up Close with Rhinos, well, I think you can fill in the blanks there. 
Whatever tour you choose, you'll get to meet with the animal's keepers who will take you on backstage for an up-close experience with the mighty but gentle giants in a special viewing area. The rhino's tour is $45 per guest and the elephants are $35 per guest, not including theme park admission, which you do need. Although the Zootopia gang hasn't joined the Animal Kingdom rankings yet, the age-old predator versus prey conflict that Nick Wilde and Judy Hopps have to face during their movie is the very theme of one of our favorite quick services, Flame Tree Barbecue. Now don't worry, the whole animals eating animals thing isn't presented gruesomely here or anything, but you will notice the message coming through in the details. Look around you and you'll notice alligators eating fish, ant eaters eating ants, and spiders getting ready to tangle butterflies in their intricate webs. Just don't think too hard about the barbecue on your fork. This next one is one of my favorite attractions, especially if you've got kids. This might not be a secret location in Dino Land, but it can definitely be an overlooked one. The Boneyard Fossil Fun Site is a play area for kids with several slides, dig areas, and other activities to help your little ones burn off some steam. There is a lot of cool stuff here. That being said, the Boneyard is currently closed per the release of this video for some major refurbishments and other cool stuff and isn't expected to open back up until mid-June. So if you're going to the park super soon, you may find the Boneyard to be a little dark and off limits, but pretty soon it's gonna open again. And I'm telling you, this is a great place to let your kids run off some energy when it's, believe it or not, hard to find places in the parks where they can really get rid of all that energy. All right, are you ready for a completely updated show in Animal Kingdom? Though the OG version of Finding Nemo the Musical completed its final performance in Animal Kingdom in 2020 before the closures took place, a new version of the show called Finding Nemo the Big Blue and Beyond filled its shoes, or rather, fins. This show premiered last June and now features a fresh script with updated set pieces, and during the story, the fish from Dr. P. Sherman's office have finally made their way to the Marine Life Institute, like you'll see in the Finding Nemo sequel, Finding Dory. From the Institute, the fish recap Nemo and Marlin's big adventure, which means you can still expect to see a performance filled with puppetry, classic songs, and updated musical numbers, too. Now, why celebrate one event when you can celebrate two? Every April 22nd, Animal Kingdom has multiple reasons to celebrate. Not only is it Earth Day, but it's also the park's birthday. And just this past April, the youngest Disney World park turned the big 2-5. Our little Animal Kingdom is growing up so fast. During these celebrations, Animal Kingdom likes to go all out with rare character sightings, specialty treats, and exclusive merchandise. Just keep in mind that Animal Kingdom does get pretty popular on these days, so the park might be a little more hopping than usual. But there's probably going to be some very, very cool stuff to do. Are you ready to stroll down Route 498? Dino Land USA is probably one of the most overlooked areas of the park. You know I love it, we've already talked about it. And yet, it also has some of the most elaborate theming, along with a very detailed backstory that most people don't realize. As the story goes, back in the 1940s, Dino Land was a quiet town off Highway 498 in Diggs County. Fossils were discovered near a local gas station, which caused paleontologists and graduate student assistants to travel into the sleepy town and form the beginning of the Dino Institute headquarters. You can even spot the city signs around Dino Land that say Diggs County US 498, which places you right in the middle of this unfolding tale. And because this is Disney we're talking about here, they wouldn't go through all the trouble of making an elaborate backstory without adding even more secret details, would they? Turns out Route 498 isn't just some random number. It's actually a nod to the opening of Disney's Animal Kingdom itself. The park opened on April 22nd, 1998. Hence the 498. Now, why just go to a theme park when you could also learn some valuable skills while you're there, like art? During the animation experience over at Rafiki's Planet Watch, you can learn how to draw a popular animated character from an experienced Disney artist with a different animal almost every time you go. Just make sure to check the park schedules ahead of time so you know when these classes are gonna happen. Have your Google Translate handy? Great, because you might need it while roaming the pathways of Animal Kingdom. In case you're not familiar with this app, it uses your phone camera to automatically detect whatever language it's seeing by using the Google Lens. Then it translates it for you right in front of your very eyes. This was very helpful to me when I was in Japan. And believe me, there's a lot of things you can translate around this park. For example, if you're in the Asia section of the park, track down the statues of Doug and Russell. When you translate the writing under their stone structures, you'll find that Russell says boy and Doug's says dog. Probably could have figured that out without the translator, but regardless, it is pretty cool. 
Maybe a less obvious one for you might be this Simba and Nala wall over in the Africa section, which has a question written out in Swahili. When you scan the sentence with your Google Lens, the question translates to, can you feel the love tonight? Okay, it's time to take your PhotoPass game to the next level in Animal Kingdom. Capture Your Moment will give you a personalized, uninterrupted 20-minute photo session with a Disney PhotoPass photographer inside Animal Kingdom. Your session will take place in the Discovery River area so that you'll have that lovely Tree of Life backdrop, and each 20-minute photo session is $99, not including gratuity. But if you want more time, you just need to book a back-to-back -back session at double the cost. Like the other extra experiences I've mentioned today, you can book these on the Disney website or through your My Disney Experience app. It's a cute option for an engagement announcement, a baby announcement, maybe a Christmas card. You get it. Now, sometimes the best Disney secret is one that messes with your mind. And this is probably my favorite secret in all of Animal Kingdom. Over in Pandora, you'll probably notice that there are quite a few waterfalls coming out of the floating rocks and landscapes. I mean, how could you not? They're gorgeous. But would you believe me if I told you that one of them is a fake? There are three waterfalls near the tippy top of the mountain that make up the entrance to the Flight of Passage. They appear to be real, but one of them is actually an optical illusion. Instead of actual water, it's a rotating wheel that looks like water, but falls much more slowly than a real waterfall would, forcing it to appear further from you than it actually is. Disney even added fabric at the bottom to make it look like mist was spraying from the impact. Now, if you can't find anything you want to take home with you from one of the gift shops, consider investing your souvenir funds into a worthy cause instead. Even if you don't want to buy anything, you can still donate to Disney's Conservation Fund at lots of the registers in Animal Kingdom. This also works at Creature Comforts, the Starbucks location, and you can tack on a little bit of money to your order, which will go straight to the Conservation Fund. Just let a cast member know what donation you'd like to make, and Disney will match it. You may also receive a colorful conservation button as a thank you when they're available. And speaking of Starbucks, there's one other way to donate to a good cause at Creature Comforts. If you buy the flat white, which is essentially an espresso with steamed milk, a portion of the proceeds will go to the conservation of cotton top tamarins. Don't know what a tamarind is? Here, here's a picture of them. They're just these cute little monkey guys with fantastic hair and they deserve the world. In fact, you can see an exhibit of these South American monkeys right outside Creature Comforts. So why a flat white for tamarind conservation? According to Disney, the slightly sweet espresso treat was selected because of the creamy white dollop that tops the popular beverage, similar to the crest of white hair that extends from the animal's forehead to the nape of its neck. Now, Animal Kingdom isn't one to go all out during the holiday time, but what they do provide is amazing. The Merry Menagerie takes place on Discovery Island, featuring various winter animals and life-size puppet variety. Cast members maneuver these puppets around to greet guests while a few musicians play their festive tunes nearby. The puppets include a variety of wintry critters like reindeer, foxes, polar bears, and penguins. To say that I love these guys is a serious understatement. They are amazing. Look at them, they're the cutest. Now, of course, we're gonna talk about this next one in an Animal Kingdom Secrets video. Let's go earn some badges. Turns out becoming a wilderness explorer, just like Russell in the Pixar movie Up, is pretty easy. Just head over to the Wilderness Explorer's headquarters or one of the troop leader locations in Animal Kingdom to get started on collecting badges. There are over 25 badges for kids to collect, but each has to be earned after completing a wilderness challenge. Needless to say, this activity could lead to hours of entertainment and it is completely and totally free. Now let's learn even more about that tree of life. I know, I can't stop. Look, there's a lot to this big park icon other than its created and origin story. So let me hit you with a lightning round of interesting facts all surrounding the tree of life. It has 320 animals sculpted all over it. It's 145 feet tall and took artists and Imagineers 18 months to get all those different animals carved into it. Before the plaster hardened on each carving, the artists only had about six to 10 hours to work on them, which I get nervous when I'm timed on a video game level, so I can only imagine that amount of pressure. And on top of the Tree of Life, there are more than 103,000 artificial leaves. The Tree of Life is also actually built out of an oil rig. And that's all you get right now, but don't worry, I'm sure we will give you more Tree of Life facts in future videos. Okay, so how about one more specialty tour to add to your bucket list? This one's definitely on mine. Savor the Savannah is an exclusive evening safari tour of Animal Kingdom's Harambe Wildlife Reserve, followed by African-inspired small plates, beer, and wine from a lovely private viewing area on the Savannah. 
You'll also receive a little trinket to take home with you after. The price for this one is $174 per guest, but much like all of Disney's tours, you're still gonna have to pay for park admission and secure a park pass reservation before you visit. Don't worry, you're not hearing things. That knocking sound right above the Dawa bar is just all part of the Imagineering fun. According to the story, this knocking is coming from the landlady who's going door to door of the students who live above the bar. Apparently, they haven't paid this month's rent yet. All right, it's time to brave the mountain. Expedition Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom is 199.5 feet tall. But as previously stated, Disney's numbers aren't ever random. There's a reason this height is so very specific. According to FAA requirements, any structure that exceeds an overall height of 200 feet above ground level needs to be marked and or lighted with a beacon for the safety of passing airplanes. But since Expedition Everest Mountain is literally 0.5 feet away from that requirement, Disney doesn't need to ruin the story it's trying to tell with a big blaring ball of red light. This is the same strategy Disney uses in their other parks too. Tower of Terror over in Hollywood Studios stands at exactly 199 feet, while Cinderella Castle only reaches 189 feet. Have you ever heard of Dino Sue? Hopefully so, but just to catch you up to speed, if you haven't, Sue is actually the world famous Tyrannosaurus Rex that was unearthed in South Dakota. Sue's dino skeleton is actually the largest and most complete T-Rex fossil ever found with over 90% of the bones unearthed and excavated. The real Sue is on display in the Field Museum over in Chicago, Illinois, but you can see an authentic looking Dino Sue replica right in Dinoland, USA. Just keep an eye out as you head down the path toward the dinosaur ride. She's hard to miss. Now, have you noticed one of Disney's hottest selling souvenirs won't be found anywhere in Animal Kingdom? What is it? Those balloons. Balloons are strictly forbidden from Animal Kingdom and Animal Kingdom Lodge to keep the animal friends safe since popped balloon pieces can look like an awfully tasty snack for some. Even if you purchased a balloon from another park and you wanted to bring it with you, Animal Kingdom won't allow it. So it's best to keep your balloon safely back in your hotel room and take them out on a stroll for a different park day instead. Now, let me know if you've noticed this. On the bridge across from Expedition Everest, you can get a great view of the mountain, as well as some epic photo pass shots. But along with some pretty views across the water, you'll also find a unique structure decked out with all sorts of beads and goblets and fruit. This is actually a shrine built by the villagers in the shape of the mountain. Hmm, wonder if the Yeti knows all this stuff is for them. They should probably claim it before it's all taken up to the lost and found. Congratulations, you are now a Disney Animal Kingdom scholar. I'd hand you a degree and shake your hand if I could, but just know that I appreciate your commitment nonetheless. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.